Hi, I'm Tyler Moore, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this website step by step with no step skipped. It's not only a beautiful website, but it's also a blog, and it works on any of your mobile devices like your iPad, your iPhone, your iPod Touch, any Android devices, and of course, a Mac or a PC. So if you have about an hour and you want to make a beautiful website, let's get to it. So this is the site that we're going to be building today, and my site is a fictional sushi restaurant site. Um, I got these images from one of my favorite restaurants called Sugarfish here in LA. But this site includes this nice image slider, it includes some text below it, and you can put anything you want right here. It includes some icons to the different pages on my website. And on the different pages, we have a menu because this is a sushi restaurant. And this is just an image right here. An about page with some information about my company. I'm also going to be showing you how to make a blog for your uh, website. And then it also includes a basic uh, location page with a contact form right here so your visitors can email you directly from your website. And I've also included a little Twitter bar up here that shows my latest tweets, some social icons, and I will also be showing you how to make a custom logo using free software so you can have a nice logo for your website. So uh, the best part about this website, or one of the best parts, is that it's going to be built on WordPress. WordPress is a content management system, and all that means is that WordPress is going to make it super easy for you to add, delete, edit, or change any aspect of your website without having to know any coding like CSS, PHP, JavaScript, or anything like that. Uh, WordPress is the biggest content management system out there right now. It has about 56% of the market share for content management systems. In the past few years, it's really blown up in popularity with users like CNN, Forbes, Buzz Machine, Boing Boing, Mashable, Jay-Z, Katy Perry, and millions of others. So it's not only beginners who are using WordPress, but over the last few years, it's become the new standard for professional uh, web developers because it gives them a nice solid and simple platform to build their websites on. So let's uh, get started and let's find out what we need to do in order to make this website ourselves. So the first thing that we need to do is get a domain name. So a domain name is like www.google.com. This is Google's domain name. You can also get .biz, .net, .org, or .info. Uh, what a domain is, is basically it's like a phone number uh, for your website. So you type in your domain up here, and then it brings up your website. But the domain name does not store the content or any of the information on your website. That is where hosting comes in. So hosting is basically a computer that's on 24 hours a day that stores and holds all of the information on your website like images and text. And it brings up this information when someone types in your domain name up here in the URL bar. So after that, we need to get, uh, we need to install WordPress. And that's really simple to do. That's just a one click install. And then we just have to add our content and using WordPress, that's super easy to do. So WordPress is free, but in order to have a place to install WordPress on, you do need to pay for a domain and pay for hosting. A domain will run you around $15 per year and hosting is going to run you around $10 per month. And these should be your only costs for this website because since you're learning how to build this website yourself, you're not going to have to pay an expensive web developer to make little updates or changes. You can just do it yourself. So everything's going to cost you around 
$25 and I'm also going to show you how to get a little discount on that $25. So let's get started with getting a domain and getting hosting and this can be done at the same place at the same time. So let's head over to hostgator.com and this is the web host that I use. There are thousands of different web hosts you can choose from. Um, I use HostGator because they are one of the biggest hosting companies out there. They also own Bluehost and a couple of the other really well-known hosting companies. And I've been using them for many, many years and never had a problem. So I'm going to recommend HostGator. So once you get here, you can go to web hosting. So this is where you choose which hosting plan that you want and they're going to give you a bunch of different options but what you want to choose is either the hatchling or the baby plan but I always recommend the baby plan because the baby plan allows you to have unlimited domains. So you could have uh, ilovedogs.com, iloveturtles.com and ilovecats.com all on the same web host. And with the Hatchling plan, you can only have one single domain. So if you ever wanted to have a new website with a new domain, you would have to pay extra or buy this again for the uh, extra website. So I recommend going with the baby plan. But if you know you're only going to want one website, you can also choose the Hatchling plan. So either way, you can choose which billing cycle you want by uh, clicking here and if you pay for three years up front you'll get the best deal you can pay two years up front one year six months or you can just pay monthly which I do uh, so obviously the longer you pay for the better deal you get but I choose monthly because I like the option of being able to cancel at any time so I'm gonna choose monthly and I'm gonna click order now and this is the important step of choosing your domain name. So I'm going to choose simpleiskey.com and hopefully it says it's available. If it's not available, you're just going to have to get a little bit more creative. And you can also choose between .net, org, info, or .biz. And you can also uh, remember that you can use dashes within your domain name. Um, if you ordered your domain name from another service like GoDaddy, you can click here and then just type in your domain right here. So I'm going to choose simpleiskey.com and below I'm going to make sure I have the package and billing cycle that I want. And then you have to just make up any username. I'm just going to choose my name and then I'm going to choose my security pin and uh, this is where you enter in your billing information and your credit uh, credit card information. And if you're not from the United States, you can choose to pay with PayPal by, by clicking here. Below that is where HostGator is going to try to sell you on some hosting add-ons. And generally, I recommend against all of them so you can just save yourself some money. The only one that you might want is the private domain. And uh, with every domain, you can actually look up information about the owner of the domain. So you can see things like uh, people's names and people's addresses and emails. So if you don't want people to see that, you can leave this checked off. But if you don't care, you can save yourself $10 per year and just uncheck it. So I'm going to leave this unchecked. Um, we do not need site lock since WordPress is already very secure. And we're not going to need any of this other stuff. So just leave it all unchecked and uh, uh, save yourself this money. So below that is where you can enter in a coupon code. And by default, HostGator will give you 20% off. But if you enter in you gator 13 hostgator will give you 25% off and this is my coupon code so for everybody that enters in this coupon code hostgator also gives me a little credit so i do appreciate everyone who does enter it in and just make sure to click validate and you'll get the 25% off down here so just review your order make sure you're getting all of the stuff you want especially make sure this is the correct domain that you want to register click I have read and agreed to the terms and click create account so I'm gonna fill out all of this information and I will see you on the next page 
So the next page was just a confirmation and you should be receiving this email with all of your HostGator account details soon. Uh, it can take up to an hour sometimes to receive this email and it can take up to 24 hours sometimes for your domain to become fully functional. But once you receive this email, the next thing that we have to do is install WordPress. So let's do that now and let's go down to password and uh, HostGator will automatically create this password for you. And let's just copy it. Remember the username that you made on the last step. And over at your control panel, just click the link right here. So just type in your username, paste in your password, and click login. So this is the back end or the administrative area of your hosting account. You can do a lot of different things and change a lot of different options, but what we're here to do is to install WordPress. So let's scroll down to software and services and click quick install. On the left hand side under blog software, you'll see WordPress. Click that and then click continue. So the first thing you want to do is choose which domain you want to install WordPress on. If you're like me and have many domain names, you'll have to choose which domain name you want from the drop down list. And if you want your WordPress installation to be on a subdirectory, for example, simpleiskey.com slash sushi, you could type in sushi right here. But if you just want your WordPress installation to be on your main domain name, you can just leave this blank. So I'm just going to leave this blank. I'm going to keep enable auto upgrades on. And then I'm just going to type my email. My blog title, which is going to be your company name or your name your admin username and that can be anything that you want I'll just choose Tyler my first and last and I'm gonna click install now so after it's finished installing you can actually view your new site if you click this here link you can also just go to your domain. So mine will be simpleiskey.com. And this is what a new WordPress installation looks like. But what we want to do is start adding content and start changing around the way the site looks. So let's copy the password that the WordPress installation made for us. Remember the username. And then let's go to the admin area. So you'll want to bookmark this page because you will be using this page a lot. And to get to this page from any computer, you can just go to yourdomain.com slash WP dash admin, and you'll be brought to this page. So just enter your uh, username in and paste in your password. Click login. So this is where you manage your whole website. This is where you add content or edit content or do any administrative changes to your whole website. So let's uh, first change the password to something a little bit more memorable. So let's go over to users and click your profile. And at the bottom, you'll see the password and you can just type in something that you will remember and click update profile. All right, so now that we've installed WordPress, we can scratch this off the list. And before we start adding our content, uh, we actually have to install a theme. So I forgot to add this, but this is really easy. And basically all the theme is, is the way that your website looks. So it's gonna change the skin or the look of your website. You could have a bunch of different themes with all the same content on your website. So let's get a new theme right now and let's head over to appearance and click themes. Click install themes right up here. And you're going to want to type in I feature. That's one word. Click search. And then just click install now right here. After it's done installing, click activate. Now, if we 
look at our website, you can click complete installation. If we look at our website, it should now look a little bit different. So from here, we can start adding our content. So the first thing that I want to do is start adding some pages to the navigation menu. So this is the navigation menu up here. And I want to add a few pages that say uh, home, menu, about. I want to add a blog page. And then I want to add a contact and location page. So let's do that now. And let's go to our dashboard. And then let's go to pages and click add new. So I'm just going to add some blank pages for now. The first one is going to be called Home. I'll just click Publish. And then I'll click Add New again. And I'm going to add a menu page for my sushi restaurant menu. Publish. Click Add New. I'm going to add a About Us page a blog and a location slash contact page so now if we uh, look at our website we can see that we have a bunch of new pages but I want to get rid of the sample page so to uh, delete a page you can go over to pages and under sample page you can just throw it in the trash but uh, once you throw something in the trash it's not permanently deleted you can permanently delete it by going over to the trash and you can also restore uh, something that you threw away on accident and click delete permanently all right, so now that we have our pages, I actually want to reorganize the order of these pages. So for example, I want the home page to be first, the menu page to be second, and so on. So to reorganize your navigation menu, just head over to your dashboard, go to appearance, and click menus. So now we have to create a new custom menu. So just type in your menu name, we'll just call it main click create menu and then we're going to set the primary menu to this new main menu that we just created and now we just have to check off the pages that we want to show in our new custom menu so let's check off the location and contact page blog about us and menu but I'm going to leave out the home page because this I feature theme is automatically going to create a little home icon instead of the home page. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Just click add to menu. And then here is where you can drag and drop to rearrange the navigation menu. So I want the menu page to be second after the home page. I want the uh, about us page to show up after that and then the blog. So from here, we can just click Save Menu. And now if we refresh our website, we should have a nice little home icon and uh, our pages in the order that we want them to be. So if you scroll down on your home page right now, you'll notice that there's actually some sample blog post and these little sidebar widgets. Now, I want this home page to be really clean, and I just want it to display a... Uh, image slider, some text, and these three icons, which we will edit. So let's edit the home page now. And let's go over to Pages. And then let's go under Home. Let's click Edit. So I'm just going to add some text about my sushi company. So it's going to be a little description, and I've already prepared this text. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in. And then I'm going to click Update. So you'll notice that if now we refresh our website, we won't see any changes yet. This is because by default, um, the home page in the WordPress website is, the, is actually the blog. So to change the default home page to this home page, we have to change the front page settings. So let's go over to settings, reading, 
and then under front page displays we're going to click a static page so now we can set our front page to the home page that we created and then we can set the post page to the blog so let's click save and now let's refresh our page and you'll notice we'll have the text that we wrote um, and then the blog will have the sample blog posts but for now the home page doesn't look exactly how we want it so we have to do some further editing I want to get rid of these sidebars I want to add an image slider on the top and then I want to add those three little um, icon boxes below this text so let's do that now and let's go over to pages under home click edit and let's scroll down under page options and under select page layout let's click this first icon which is the full width uh, page layout so we'll get rid of the sidebars so let's click update and let's refresh it so now it made it full width and now let's add an image slider so under page elements and under slider let's just drag it in right above page and all pages is just this text right here and then I want to add the boxes below the page so I'm just gonna drag in boxes below the page and I'll click update so let's refresh and we should have an image slider and the boxes below but I want to get rid of this comment because I don't want people to be able to make comments on my home page so to get rid of comments on a page in WordPress just head over to screen options up here and then you'll want to check off discussion and then scroll down to the bottom of the page and now you'll have a new discussion tab and you'll just want to uncheck allow comments and allow trackbacks so now if we update that and refresh it we should have a clean start on our home page so the next thing to do is to start adding some new slides to this image slider so uh, let's head over to the edit page page and scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see slider light options now if we click that this is the place where you can click to upload your new image slides but uh, most likely first you'll have to resize your images because let's say you have an image like this this is obviously much too large to fit on the home page so let's resize that image and let's upload it to the image slider so to resize images let's head over to pixlr.com that's p-i-x-l-r.com and let's hit the pixlr editor from here just click open image from computer select the image that you want to resize and click open so the first thing that you want to make sure you do is double click this lock right here and then you can resize the image by going to image canvas size and let's set the width to 980 and let's set the height to 390 I found this to be the best size for the image slider images click OK and now we can move around the image within the canvas with this black arrow tool just select it and click and drag the image to change uh, where you want to crop the image and you can also resize the image by going to edit free transform holding shift and clicking and dragging in any of the corners so I'm just gonna move this around and resize it till it looks good and that looks about right then I'm just gonna hit enter now I can save this file and upload it to my WordPress website so I'm gonna go to file save and before you click OK to save it make sure to add a dot JPG to the end of the name of the file so after you've done that just click OK and you can save it to your desktop now let's upload this file to our WordPress website so we can close this up and I'm going to go to the edit page page open up the slider light options um, on the bottom of the edit page page 
and then click upload select files and select the new resized image so I'm gonna just open this up and I'm going to insert into page so let's update that and see if it worked all right that looks good now let's uh, upload a few more and I'm actually going to change this I just wanted to use that large image as an example so um, as an alternative to clicking select files you can also just go to your folder on your computer and just drag in the files that you want to upload so I'm gonna insert that into page then I'm gonna upload another one and the last one so just upload it and click insert into page now we can update our home page and see if it worked all right that looks pretty good so right now if you click on any of these slides it actually is going to go to the wordpress.org website and I want to change where that link goes so let's change that for me I want when you click on any of these slides I want it to link to the menu page so I'm just gonna click on my menu page right here I'm gonna select this URL up here I'm gonna right click and click copy and then go over to my edit page page and under slider light options under each slide I'm just gonna change the link so I'm just gonna paste that in paste that in and paste that in so now when you click on any of my slides hopefully you'll be brought to the menu page so the next thing to do is to start changing these three icons down here I want this first icon to be a menu icon and I want it to say menu underneath it and when you click it obviously you'll be brought to the menu page I want the second one to be a map icon which will bring you to the location slash contact page when you click it and I want the third one to be information about us and obviously this is going to go to the about us page um, when you click it and it's always good to have multiple links or buttons to the same areas of your website just so it makes it super easy for your visitors to find whatever information that they're looking for so let's do that now and let's head over to dryicons.com and this is a great place to get free icons and I know that I want a menu icon but I actually couldn't find a menu icon on this website so the closest I could come was a book icon so I'm just gonna search for book right up here click search and scroll down until I find the one that I want and this one looks good and then what you want to do is just click and drag this onto your desktop after that I want a map icon so I'm just gonna type in map hit search and find the one that I want this one looks good and I'm just gonna drag and drop onto my desktop again and the last one will be an information icon so I'll just type in info and find a good one and this one should do so I'm just gonna drag this in and we can close up dry icons so you'll notice that you will not see anywhere to edit those icons on this page what you have to do is go over to appearance click theme options click blog and if you scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see options for boxes light and this is where we can edit our icons so for the first box I want to upload my menu or book icon so I'm gonna click upload upload files select files and I'm going to double click my book icon and click insert into post now when you click that uh, box I want it to lead to the menu page so I'm just gonna go to my website and 
click the menu page and select my URL and copy it. And then under link URL, I'm just going to delete this and paste in what I just copied. And the text under the image, I want it to say menu or view our menu. So I'm just going to type it in there. And now we can move on to the second one. So the second one is going to be the map icon. So I'm going to upload my map icon. And make sure to select the icon. Make sure the blue box is around the icon that you want to insert. And then click insert into post. So the link is going to be the location slash contact page. So I'm going to click this page, copy this URL, and paste it here instead of the wordpress.org link. The box is going to say map. And the third one is going to be the information icon. So I'm just going to select files, upload my info icon, select it, click insert into post, go to my about us page. This is where I want my info link to link to. Copy the URL, paste it right here, and type in about us under the icon. So let's see if that works. Click Save Options. And once it's saved, let's go to the home page. And there we go. So now if you click on any of these icons, it'll bring you to the menu or the map or the About Us page. So from here, I want to change some of the theme options. I want to add my social icon links up here. I want to get rid of this footer down at the bottom of the page because my sushi restaurant doesn't really need this footer, but I will show you how to edit that also. Um, and I want to change this to my phone number and location. So let's do that now. I'm going to start with these social icons. So let's go over to theme options, appearance, theme options, and let's click on header. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see different options for the social icons. So I like this option better. So I'm going to click that and I'm just going to add my Twitter URL. So it's twitter.com slash knutent, my Facebook URL. I'm going to turn off Google Plus and I'm going to add Google Maps. So to add anything, just click on and then I'm going to go to maps.google.com and I'll just choose Manhattan Beach as my location. So once you've found your location, just click this link right here and then you can copy this link on the top right here. Click copy and you can paste that in right there. Click Save Options. And let's check out our website. So now we have Facebook, Twitter, and Google Maps. Next thing I want to do is remove this footer. So let's go to Theme Options, Footer. And I'm going to just uh, turn off footer widgets. Click Save and Refresh. After that, I want to change this to my location and my phone number. So I'm going to go to Settings, General, and this is where we can change uh, the tagline. So the tagline is going to be my fictional sushi restaurant address and my phone number. So after you're done uh, changing those options, just click Save Changes. And hopefully that will work. And another thing that I want to do is remove this search bar right here. So if you want to remove the search bar, you can go to your Appearance Theme Options and click Header. Scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll have an option to turn off the search bar. Click Off and click Save Options. 
Let's see if that worked. So the final thing to complete our homepage is to create and upload a custom logo for our website. So let's go over to Appearance, Theme Options, and under Header, let's turn on Custom Logo right here. And if you already have a logo prepared, you can upload it by clicking Upload and uploading it. But if you don't have a logo, you can head over to Pixlr again. That's P-I-X-L-R dot com. And then you'll want to hit the Pixlr editor right here. Click Create a New Image. And then we're going to set the width to around 220. And you can be a little flexible on this width. It doesn't have to be exact. And let's set the height to around 66. Click the Transparent button and click OK. So you'll see that the background looks checkered, and that just means that it's a transparent background. So everywhere you see the checkered uh, pattern is where the website, the actual color of this website, is going to shine through the image. And you'll see what I mean when we create our logo. So I'm just going to type in my company name by clicking this A right here and clicking the canvas. And I'm going to type sushi. Maybe I'll enlarge it a little bit and I can select a font that I like and a color that I like and I'm going to click OK. So I'm just going to drag this around where I want it on the canvas by clicking this black arrow and dragging and then we can create a new layer by clicking this button right here. And if you want, you can make a illustration or whatever you want. Obviously, you'll want to get a little more creative than me on this. And I will just do a happy face. So that's my awesome uh, sushi logo. I'm going to click Save. And this is very important that you, under Format, choose PNG. And then you can name this logo.png. Make sure to include the .png. Click OK. And save it to your computer. Click Save. I'll save it on my desktop. Now we can close this up. And head over to Theme Options. Header. I'm going to turn on Custom Logo. And click Upload. Upload Files. Select Files. Then I'll click my new logo and click insert into post. So now if we save that, we should have a nice custom logo for our website, but I'm actually going to change this logo into something a little better that I made earlier. So I'm going to upload that now. So I'm just going to save this and refresh this page. So now that our home page is complete, we can start working on the individual pages. So the first page that we're going to do is the menu page. So this page is going to be super simple. All I want to do is get rid of these sidebars. I want to get rid of this comment box. And I want to place a big picture of my sushi restaurant menu right in the middle of the page. And this is the picture that I want to add to my website. So let's do that now. And I'm going to go into the dashboard. I'm going to go to pages. And under menu, I'm going to click edit. And now I want to add an image into the body of my page. <clears throat> so I'm going to click add media. Upload files. I'm going to select my menu from my computer. Click open. And now I want this uh, menu to be displayed as the full size menu. I don't want it to be small. So under size, I'm going to make sure that it says full size and not large or medium or thumbnail. And I'm going to set the link to to none because when you click the menu, I don't want it to link to anything. All right, so I'm going to click insert into page. And then I'm going to click my uh, menu and I'm going to center it. 
this is going to make it look a little more even and centered in the uh, on our website. So after that, I want to get rid of these sidebars right here. So I'm going to scroll down and under page options, I'm going to select page layout as the full width layout right here. Just click that once. And then I want to get rid of the comments right here. So to get rid of comments, you want to make sure that you have discussion turned on uh, under screen options and then scroll down and uncheck allow comments and uncheck allow trackbacks. So I'm going to click update and refresh my menu page. So that completes our menu page. That was pretty easy. And the next page that I want to do is the About Us page. So the About Us page is also going to be pretty simple. Um, it's going to contain an image of our sushi chef and then a little description about him. And I also want to get rid of these sidebars and I want to get rid of the comment box. So let's do that now and let's go over to the pages page and under about us click edit so I'm just gonna add a few paragraphs of text telling about my sushi restaurant and I already have those prepared so I'm just gonna copy and paste those in and then what I want to do is add a picture of my sushi restaurant chef to the left hand side of this page and I want this text to wrap around that image so I'll show you what I mean by that. And to do that, I'm just going to place my cursor at the very beginning of the sentence and click. And then I'm going to click Add Media, and I'm going to upload the picture of my sushi restaurant chef. And under Alignment, I'm going to set it to left. And this will make it so the image is set to the left, and the text wraps around the image on the right. And under link to, I'm going to set it to none because I don't want anything to happen when you click the image. So I'm going to click insert in the page. And then you'll notice that the text will wrap around this image real nicely. After that, I'm going to remove these sidebars. So again, under page options, under select page layout, I'm going to click the full width page layout. And then I want to get rid of the comments box. So under discussion, I'm going to disable uh, comments and disable trackbacks. So now if we update the page and refresh it, we should have a nice basic uh, about us page with the image on one side and the text on the other. So I'm going to save the blog for last and get started on the location and contact page. So again, the location and contact page is going to have a big Google map right here in the middle. And then on the side, it's going to have a contact form so your visitors can email you directly from your website. So let's get started on that now. And the first thing I want to do is make the sidebars a little bit wider so they can better accommodate the contact form. So to do that, I'm going to go into the theme options, that's appearance, theme options. And under design, I'm going to select under wide sidebar, I'm going to turn on wide sidebars. So I'm going to click save options. And now if we refresh, we'll see that the sidebars are a little bit wider. So from here, we can start adding our uh, map. So let's go over to maps.google.com and all you have to do is type in your address or location. I'll just choose Manhattan Beach, California. And then click this link uh, button right here. Click customize and preview embedded map. And then we want a custom map size. So under map size, click custom. And under width, let's set it to 550. And under height, let's set it to 465. I found this to be the best size for the map on the website. Um, you can move around the map if you want to change the orientation of the map on your website. 
And after that, just go down to this code, right click, click select all, right click again, and click copy. So now we can close this up and we can close this up. And now we want to add that map to the body of our location and contact page. So let's go over to pages. Under location and contact, let's click edit. And now we have to paste in some HTML. So to paste in HTML in a WordPress website, you'll want to click this text tab up here. Right click and just paste in the code like that. So I also know that I want to get rid of this comment box. So again, scroll down to discussion and disable comments and disable trackbacks. So let's update that. And refresh it. And that looks pretty good. But now we have to add the uh, contact form over here on the right hand side. So let's do that now. And let's go over to our dashboard and what we want to do is add a new plugin into our WordPress website. So a plugin is something that will extend the functionality of your WordPress website. That's like a photo gallery or what we're going to do now, like a contact form. So to add plugins in your WordPress website, just go over to plugins, click add new. And from here, let's just type in contact form seven, click search. And under Contact Form 7, click Install Now, click OK, and then click Activate Plugin. So now you'll see a new Contact tab in your dashboard right here. Let's click it. And under Contact Form 1, just click Edit. And then let's copy this code right up here. So I'm just going to select it and copy it. And you'll want to make sure that if you scroll down, this is the email that you want to receive your emails at. If it's not, you can change it, click save and continue on. So now let's add our contact form to our sidebar. So to edit the sidebars in uh, WordPress, go to appearance and click widgets. So this is also where you can edit the footer, which I hid, but using these same methods, you can edit the uh, footer widget if you chose to keep it. So let's add a contact form to the sidebar right here. And I'm going to open up sidebar right. And then I'm going to drag in a text widget like this. I'm going to give it a title of contact us and then I'm going to paste in the code that I just copied. Click save. Now if we refresh our contact page we should have a nice contact form right here. And I want to actually edit this contact form. I don't want to have a subject field right here so I'm going to go back to my uh, new contact form plugin going to click edit under con contact form one and then where it says subject right here I'm just going to delete this whole block of text so I'm just going to click backspace click save and refresh my website now it just has your name your email and your message one last thing that I would like to do before I conclude the location and contact page is actually just get rid of this location and contact title. So to get rid of the page titles, you can go over to the dashboard, go to pages, under location and contact, click edit or click this title. And if you scroll down, you'll see page title and you can just turn it off. So now if we update the page and refresh it, we'll have our map without the big page title. So from here we can start working on the blog. So the first things that we have to do is get rid of this image slider and let's get rid of the boxes on the blog. So to do that, we're not going to go to pages and edit the blog like this. 
we're going to go to Appearance, Theme Options, and then we're going to click Blog right here. And we'll see all of the elements that are active for our blog. So we're just going to remove slider and remove boxes. Click Save. And now we have a nice clean start for our blog. So the first thing that I want to do is start adding some widgets on the right hand side that say categories, which obviously is going to have all the categories for my blog. And I'm going to have a little tags uh, cloud for my blog. And what I also want to do is get rid of this contact us um, widget. I only want this to show up on my location and contact page. So let's do that now and let's start with adding some uh, category and tags widgets. So let's go over to appearance widgets and under sidebar right let's open that up and I'm just going to drag in the categories widget right here and you can give it a title of categories and I don't want to choose any of these options so I'm just going to click save and under tags right here tag cloud I'm just gonna drag that in right under categories and I will call this one tags and I'll save it so now if we refresh the page we will have categories but we don't have any categories yet because we haven't added any posts and we'll have our tags um, widget but we don't have any tags yet too the only problem is that we have a contact us uh, widget on our blog and now we have a categories and tags widget on our contact page so let's get rid of those for each and let's we have to get a new uh, plugin that can sort out our sidebar widgets so let's go over to plugins and let's click add new and then just type in widget context click search and it will be this first one right up here. Click Install Now, click OK, and click Activate. So now if we go into our Appearance Widgets page and open up any of the widgets, we will now have a bunch of different options on where we can hide or show our widgets on our website. So what I want to do is hide my Categories widget on my location and contact page. In fact, I want to hide the categories widget on all pages. So let's do that now. And next to widget context, I'm going to select the drop down menu and select hide on selected. And I want to hide it on all pages. So I'm going to select this checkbox right here. And this can be a little bit confusing because um, the checkbox is on a different line than all pages, but just select the checkbox before the option that you want to select. So now if we click Save and refresh our location and contact page, our categories widget should be gone. So let's do the same thing for tags. I'm going to hide it on all pages. So I'm going to open up the tags widget, select hide on selected, and select uh, hide on all pages. So I'm going to save that, refresh that, and my location and contact page looks good. But now I still have the contact form on my blog page. So let's hide that from my blog page. And let's go back to the widgets. And I'm going to close up the tags and open up the contact us widget. So we're going to do it a little bit differently this time. This time I'm going to select show on selected. And I'm going to show it on all pages. So I'm going to select this checkbox right there and click Save. So now if we refresh, we should have only a Categories and Tags uh, widget on our blog. So the reason why you can't see the contact widget on the blog page, even though you chose to show it on all pages, is because technically the blog is not considered a page. The blog is just considered the blog. And uh, the reason why you can't see the contact form on the About Us page, even though you chose to show it on all pages, is because you have the 
sidebars disabled and the full width template enabled. So let's get started adding some new posts to the blog. And actually the first thing that I want to do is get rid of the sample post. So let's go into the dashboard and let's go to posts. And this is where you edit or delete or do anything related to your blog posts. And under the hello world post, I'm going to click trash. So let's add a new post and you guessed it, just click the add new button up here. And I'm going to give my new blog post a title. I'll call it new location in Los Angeles. And I am going to select the visual editor. And then I'm going to add an image in to the top. So I'll click add media, upload files, select files. And I'm just going to add in a picture. I'm going to set the link to to none because I don't want anything to happen when you click it. I'll set the alignment to none and I am going to set the size to large. So I'll insert that into post. And then I'm going to add my text underneath and I'm just going to paste in some dummy text that I copied. And what I'm going to do is add a continue reading link in my post. So if we hit enter and add and click this button right here, this will make it so you can click read more and it's not going to show the whole blog post on the blog homepage. So from here, let's add some categories, do business, new restaurant, and sushi. Add new. And then I'm going to add some tags. So I'll add uh, business, Jorge, and Los Angeles. So let's publish that and see how it looks. And we'll refresh our blog. And there we go, we have our image, my blog post, and then it says continue reading. So if we click that, we'll have all the whole blog post, and we also have our tags and our categories. So let's add another one just for fun. Add new. And I will call this one now hiring waiters. And I will paste in my dummy text. I'll add a read more link right here. So I'll just click this button. And then I'm going to add an image right up here and I want the text to wrap around the image. So I'm going to place my cursor right here and click. Click add media. Upload my picture. I will set the alignment to left the link to to none and I'll set the size to medium should work. So now if I insert that into the post, my text should now wrap around the image. So I am going to check off which categories this belongs to. This belongs to business and new restaurant and I'm going to add a new one and call it hiring. And we can give it a few tags. We'll say now hiring and make money. All right, so now let's publish that. <clears throat> and check out the blog. And we should have a new post with the image over here on the left hand side, a new category, some new tags, and I'm not going to bore you with making any more blog posts. I think you get the point here. So the last thing that I want to share with you today is adding a Twitter bar up here at the top that will display your latest uh, tweets from your Twitter feed. So if you want to add the Twitter bar to your blog, you can just go to Appearance, Theme Options, click Blog, 
and drag in the Twitter bar to the top. And then at the bottom, it will add a field where you can insert your Twitter handle. So just insert it here, click Save. And then if you refresh your page, you should have your latest tweet up here. If you want to insert it into a page, you can go into Pages, edit the page that you would like to insert it into, and drag it in. Insert your username right here, and then update your page. So now if we refresh, we should have it on our page and our blog. So that concludes this video. And please like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you would like to see in future videos.